When I was younger, both of my parents worked full-time jobs, so my paternal grandparents lived with us. I was especially close with my grandmother and spent a lot of time with her. Every Sunday, my grandmother's best friend, Miss Emiko, and my older cousin, Taiko, would come to the house so the four of us could make gyoza, a Japanese dumpling, for our family dinner. The dinner was a huge affair and all five of my grandparents' children and their families attended. Dumpling making is a long, slow process, but Grandma kept it fun with her infectious laughter. The first thing that needed to be done was to boil the cabbage, which had a pungent yet enticing smell. While the cabbage boiled, Grandma and Miss Emiko diced beautiful green scallions and grated fresh, spicy-smelling ginger. Miss Emiko knew very little English, so they chatted with each other in Japanese. And since neither Taiko nor I spoke any Japanese, we usually fabricated long stories of what their conversations might have entailed. They were our real life Japanese soap opera. Two huge bowls sat on the table. One was for me and one was for Taiko. Once Miss Emiko and Grandma finished prepping the food, the cabbage, ground pork, scallions, ginger, sugar, soy sauce, garlic, and salt were divided evenly into our bowls. Now it was our turn to work, and we took our job seriously. We plunged our hands straight into the cold, goopy mixture, determined to mix in every last grain of salt. The bowls were so deep that the filling almost touched our elbows. We loved every minute of it. Once Grandma determined that it was thoroughly mixed, it was time to fill and fold the gyoza wrappers. Taiko and I spooned the filling onto the middle of the dough. Then Grandma and Miss Emiko dipped their dainty fingers into a bowl of cool water and wet the edges of the wrappers. Six perfect folds were made in order to seal all of that yummy goodness inside the gyoza. Now all that was left for me and Taiko to do was wait. We waited to hear the sizzle in the frying pan as the first dumplings went in. And we waited to smell the smokiness of the sesame oil as it cooked our delicious masterpieces. We sat patiently until we were given the spoils of our labor, the first two samples to enjoy. This is a memory that will stay with me forever. My grandmother passed away when I was just eight years old and I was devastated. Though our Sunday ritual will never be the same, my grandfather asked us to continue making the gyoza in her memory, and to this day, we have kept our word. My daughters are the perfect age to begin mixing the filling, just as Taiko and I did at their ages. So now the two of us have taken over for Grandma and Miss Emiko. I hope this is a tradition that my girls cherish and choose to carry on as well.